Okay, welcome back to your education. I'm Chris and this is Sarah. We are both registered dietitians and certified sports nutritionists at the Endurance Edge and we are here to tell you all about why you should be eating more brassicas. Yes. So we're going to talk all about the power of brassicas. So we're going to start off with what the heck are they? Yeah. So you probably know them as being the stinky vegetables. <laughs> um, so we got a nice big old list and hopefully we'll be able to, um, you'll be able to see them all. So your brassica family or your cruciferous family of vegetables are insanely powerful, but let's start off with what they are. You've got leafy version, you've got um, more of a head version, we've got roots and we've got more of an Asian version. Mm -hmm. So your leafies are arugula, kale, um, watercress, mustard greens, mm -hmm. turnip greens, those you probably know as your super stinky ones. Your head um, crucifers are um, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, um, broccolini, which mm -hmm. I know you love. Yes. Um, some of your Asian vegetables, bok choy, tatsoi, mizuna, napa cabbage, and your root vegetables, kohlrabi, horseradish, radishes, rutabagas, Turnips, and remember, keep in mind that you've got different colors mm -hmm. of cauliflower, like white and purple. You've got Chinese cabbage, you've got red cabbage, you've got green cabbage. So it's not just your standard Brussels broccoli. Sprouts or broccoli, yeah. Right, as what, so anyway, so those are your brassicas. Um, what makes them absolutely amazing mm -hmm. um, is that from the research that we've looked at so far is that they've got really powerful... Um, anti-carcinogenic effects. So mm -hmm. bioactives called glucosinolates, say that five times fast, <laughs> um, sulforaphanes, um, indole 3 carb carbonyls, so all kinds of really fantastic stuff that does awesome things for our health. So tell us about what they do for our health. Yeah, so for the anti-carcinogenic properties, um, it's really seen to be beneficial in these cancers of the digestive tract, so more specifically with stomach cancer, lung, um, colorectal, um, there's little less research showing benefit for more um, of the cancer, such as prostate, endometrial, and ovarian, um, but they still have those anti-carcinogenic properties. Um, another really amazing thing about them is that they also have um, antioxidant properties as well, and they can help support the immune system. Um, so those are kind of the three big things. They also have fiber, um, vitamins and minerals, which kind of tie into those antioxidants, as do all vegetables. But the three main health beneficial are the anti-carcinogenic, antioxidant, and the immune system boosting. Yes. Um, cool. All so, right. So, so, how do we make them? Yeah, so how do you prepare them? Yeah. There's definitely some preparation methods that kind of preserve all of those powerful properties, if you will. Yes. Um, better than, some that don't. Yeah, some yeah. better than others, yeah. right. Um, so definitely, definitely you want to stay away from preparation methods that prepare them in a lot of water. So boiling, for example. Um, reason being, when you boil them in the water, a lot of those nutrients get lost in the water. And then what do you do with the water after you're done? You yeah. dump it, right? Right. Um, so you want to stick to more like stir fry, roasting, um, steaming. Also with like mustard greens, Chris and I were talking, a lot of people, especially down here in the south, they just cook the crap out of their greens. Or collard greens. Yes. Yes. Um, so collard greens are, because we are in the South. Yes. Collard greens are insanely powerful, but yes, they are known for being cooked and stinky. To death. Yes. And that stinky stuff is the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> because there's those sulforaphanes, which are those sulfur compounds, which is why when you walk into somebody's house, when mm -hmm. they cook the snot out of mustard greens or collard Colors. greens, it smells like rotten eggs, which yeah. of course is the stuff you want. Right. The, yes. Those, those sulfur compounds that just. Yeah, so, so definitely keep that in mind. Don't overcook them. You want to cook them enough, but you don't want to cook them where you're kind of losing all those sulfur compounds. Right. Um, so how much should we eat? Like, is it one inch a day, once a week? What's yeah. gonna, what, how are we going to get this anti-carcinogenic property? Right. So this we found a little less research on, but mm -hmm. definitely there is this relationship between the more that you're eating, the more powerful the anti-carcinogenic effect so if you can eat at least one serving of these a day, you're on the right track, mm -hmm. if not more than that. Um, so what about raw versus cooked? And then we saw this a little bit in the research. Yeah, so we have we have seen kind of, I guess, components for both or arguments right. for both. Yep. Um, some say that 
raw kind of preserves the nutrients a little bit more. Um, some research has shown that cooking them kind of opens it up so the nutrients are more available to your body. Yep. Um, so overall, your recommendation would be... Eat your vegetables. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're eating them, if you like them cooked and you're going to eat them, then cook them. If you like them raw, eat them raw. It just yep. Any way that's going to get you to eat them is going to be the best for you. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So tell us about quickly a couple of... Um, what are you, some of your favorite methods? Yeah, so I love to roast broccoli and um, Brussels sprouts. Um, I'm going to play around with some bok choy recipes coming soon, so stay tuned. But I've also tried playing around with like cauliflower rice, cauliflower pizza crust, just, you know, trying to do different ways to see how I might like it best. Yeah, yeah, we're a big fan of roasting. Yes, um, roasting. And then because I have two little kids, we microwave a lot of <laughs> a lot of things because we're short on time. Yeah. Um, how else? Braising is really delicious, mm -hmm. particularly like I'm not a big radish fan, but if you braise some radishes and a little bit of butter and olive oil, it is on time. Yeah, I pretty much so, roast everything. That's so my go-to. So yummy. But I'm not the like you know the raw broccoli at the party dish. Uh uh. <laughs> I don't know, but. Very healthy. I just am not going to go for that. Okay, so let's make sure. Oh, we don't. We forgot our little warning. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so a little caution: if you are increasing your intake of brassica vegetables, um, you might be a little steakerific. <laughs> Remember we talked about those sulfur compounds when you smell like rotten egg when you're cooking them. Yeah, you might experience some of those similar. Sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't be alarmed. Everything's okay. Right. Um, just, you know, something to be aware of. Yes. And, and again, don't overcook your veggies because it stinks yeah. <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> and then, of course, you're cooking out all those compounds. Okay. So quick summary. Brassicas, lots of your stinky vegetables, whether they be head vegetables or leafy vegetables or fruits, um, they're amazing with those glucosinolates and all those other fantastic sulfur-containing compounds. Um, they benefit health. Yeah, anti-carcinogenic, yep. antioxidant, and yep. boost your immune system. Awesome. Um, make sure you don't overcook them in terms of your preparation method. Yes. Doesn't matter whether you eat them raw or cooked, get them in mm -hmm. um, at least once a day if you can. <laughs> and hopefully you're not going on a nice date after you eat yeah. <laughs> So anyway, thanks for watching again. I'm Chris. This is Sarah. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Give us some comments if you want to see different topics covered. And we'll catch you on the next education video. Thanks for watching.